So that was very fun. A good time was had by all. But anyway, we have to keep going. There's three more trophies left, which seems easy. But actually, the World Cup was arguably the easiest one we still had to win, as technically we could win it with anybody. By that, I mean it's the Euros today. And if we don't win it, we have to then go through an entire World Cup cycle that is now unneeded for the challenge just to get back to try for the Euros again. And we could end up losing our job through a poor but personally meaningless World Cup performance. So the easiest thing to do would be to just win the Euros today, right? This can only go well. Now, as said, we're going through things a lot more quickly as we've been here before, so let's fly through the intervening two years. Our Nations League group is quite tricky. Iceland, Germany and defeated World Cup finalist Serbia out for revenge. We draw the opening game with Germany before beating Iceland and Serbia. We are then held to a draw in Iceland before Germany score an undeserved late equaliser at Wembley. But if we beat Serbia in the final game, we'll go through. Except we don't. It's an absolutely disgraceful performance and once again we won't be winning the Nations League. So it's a good job it's not on the list. Our qualification group for the Euros is pretty good, save for former champions of the world and all-around save legends Norway. No Erling Haaland anymore though. And it is a complete demolition job. We win every single match without conceding a single goal and scoring 53. Which takes us to the main event. The squad is mostly the same as the World Cup, just two years older, but some new defenders. A lot of our centre-backs are either injured or too old, so Brian Tolson is going to start, having only made his international debut a week ago. Ronan Treacy has been my right-back for most of the qualification, and Anthony Malloy starts after missing the World Cup through injury. Some of the World Cup heroes, like Robert Swaby, are perhaps a bit past it, but Chris Rice and Scott O'Meara are still absolutely the key men. Our group of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Sweden and Turkey seems like quite a nice draw on paper. This is actually only the second time in our now 20-year career that we've actually been to the Euros. We made the semi-final last time with Italy and really should have won it, so let's see if we can do better this time. Bosnia were first up and we have an early scare but Davis makes a fine stop. Swabby then gets injured 23 minutes in so that at least answers the question of whether he's still appropriate to play. Ben James comes on in his stead. We did of course make a slow start at the World Cup last time before everything just went right but this is more of a concern. Umera's corner is headed against the post and then in the second half Oluwale's effort strikes the woodwork again and that's it. Nil nil. They've done nothing and yet we still haven't found a way through. Really poor. Turkey are next and they beat Sweden in their opening game so we need a win. 25 minutes in we finally decide to score a goal at the tournament as Umera's corner is flicked on by Rolf for Tolson to tap in for his first England goal. The Turkish keeper pulls off a wonder save from Rolf to keep it at 1-0 and then Turkey counter from our corner which you'd love to see and Kerem is apparently fouled by Oluwale who is back defending the penalty box for some reason. Kerem steps up to take it but it's one of the worst penalties of all time as Davis is able to just kick it away. In the second half we need another goal and from kickoff we work a lovely move from Chris Rice to cross in for Ben James to dispatch. Absolute textbook football. The game is looking secure and then we wrap it up for good as another flowing move comes to James who puts in an excellent strike from the edge of the area for three. A Swabby's injury may well have been a blessing in disguise. And then three minutes from time two of the new boys combine with Noah Prempera finding Andy Collins of Leeds to launch an absolute banger into the top corner for a fantastic 4-0 win. Sweden can only draw with Bosnia which means we have a strong position going into the final game. Other than bringing Williams in for Gibson I don't rotate for the Sweden game because I don't really think we can risk it. We didn't rotate for the entire World Cup knockout stage and that worked okay so we'll just go with that again. And it doesn't take long to find the breakthrough. Pempre who has come in left back and done pretty well finds James who whips it in for an on-rushing Chris Rice to score. Sweden then come forwards though and Hogland's cross isn't dealt with allowing Gillenberg to equalise. Sloppy, but even sloppier a few minutes later as some truly dreadful defending allows him to score again. Absolutely awful and we go down to third in the table so I chuck the water bottle at half time. Then in the second half good work from Treacy finds Gibson who smacks a strike against the base of the post. We pull forwards desperate for a goal and with hope fading and one minute of injury time left we work a chance. Gibson finds James who once again curls a sweet left footer into the top corner to save our bacon. We got away with one there. We might have gone through as a third place team anyway but now there's no doubt although we're only going through in second behind Turkey. I don't think we're going to be repeating our World Cup heroics. Just like the World Cup we get Russia in the second round which I feel could be tricky but also there's a lot of worse options. Especially as Turkey have to play Spain so yeah actually probably good we didn't win the group then. France versus Germany and Italy versus Portugal means some big hitters will be going home early too and it's Italy who draw the short straw along with Scotland and Norway while Belgium beat Ukraine. Two years ago we beat Russia so let's go and see if we can do it again. 
Ralph is suspended for this one so the experience but rarely capped Randall comes in with Tolson shifting over to the other side. And clearly this confuses the youngster as a minute in he gives away a penalty with a blatant and stupid push. Dorofev scores it. Absolutely moronic. We look to strike back straight away but Malloy hits the post. It's a nervy game but eventually on the half hour mark some great work from Romero fashions the chance which he then converts with a great strike. Not long after he's at it again but this time it's the woodwork for the second time. And make that three as Malloy finds Rice whose ball is smashed against the post by Ben James. I mean are we just addicted to hitting the woodwork in this save? The Russian goalkeeper then looks to take a simple kick but boots it straight into Alfred Scott to give us the lead. Now that's the luck I was looking for. No more highlights, my other favourite, and we come from behind to make it through once again. We get Denmark in the quarterfinal as they beat Romania. France beat Germany and then Turkey shock Spain. I bring Rolf back for the quarterfinal. The fitness of everyone isn't good, but we'll just go with it. And we make the perfect start as a beautiful move sees Malloy whip a ball in for that man Umera to dispatch for the lead. We have plenty of chances to extend it in a dominant display, but we don't, and with their first attack, the Danes obviously equalise. Mentezano with his first goal for them, of course. But we press to retake the lead and Prempris ball finds a well-timed Rice who dinks the keeper for 2-1. Denmark have the ball in the net again, but the goal is ruled out for handball. And then with nine minutes of time left, we work another neat move as sub Andy Collins fires in at the near post to surely make it safe. And we needed it as Denmark hit us on the counter again with Peterson sliding home for 3-2, but we hold out and we've made the semi-finals, where we will play Portugal, who win an absolute epic against the Dutch. Belgium beat Greece and France beat Turkey to set up the other semi-final clash. The Portugal match is my 50th game in charge of England, so let's make it a special occasion. Six minutes in, we get a massive boost as Jose Coelho gets a straight red card for this challenge on Omera. But this only serves to galvanise them as Fritas then runs in behind our defence and crosses for Pires to give them the lead. From kickoff, we look to strike back and some excellent quick passing sees Rice smashing an immediate equaliser. But this doesn't last long as Gibson plays one of the stupidest passes of all time straight to Fritas, who easily scores past a hapless Davis. Absolutely unforgivable. Rolf then heads over from Umera's corner. We are absolutely dominating the game, but not being clinical at all. And just as we press forwards for an equaliser, well, they say Madness is doing the same thing again and expecting different results, but clearly my defenders don't care, as they allow Fitas in behind for the third time to make it 3-1 and surely send us out. Absolutely unbelievable. With time running out, we work a chance for Malloy to pull us a goal back, but it's not enough. We lose, somehow, to a side with 10 men for almost the entire 90 minutes. Absolutely disgraceful defending. Some of these players should genuinely be ashamed of themselves. We should have won that game and we should have won that tournament, but we've been here before in the Euros. It just doesn't seem to work out for us. Oh, going forward, things would have been a lot easier if we just won there. The FA expected us to win, so we may well be getting the sack. But either way, do I really want to go through an entire World Cup campaign just for another shot in four years? Belgium beat France and then go on to beat Portugal in the final for their first major trophy with Gary Holt being the most random victorious manager in the entire save. Meanwhile in South America our former team Mexico once again win a tournament they shouldn't even be in, which means the Brazil and Argentina managers are both sacked. But as said, the World Cup is the problem. We could take one of these jobs or we could stay, but either way, if we don't fulfill the World Cup objective from the respective football association, we'll be sacked and it will be essentially two years wasted. We won't have a job we need to take on the Euros or Copper America in two years time. It's all very complicated. The FA decide not to sack us, so at least it's gonna be our choice. I see no real point in moving teams this side of the World Cup, so we might as well stay. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the World Cup is at least enough to avoid us getting dismissed. Having to go through a whole two year cycle for the World Cup is going to be pretty slow for me to do, but it's going to be instantaneous for you guys. And at least we can have another go at the Nations League again. I'll see you next time for the Euros again, hopefully.